passionate about broadcast media? Become a part of Broadcast Plaza, the number one broadcast media server on Discord, to discuss all about it with fellow community members and industry professionals, including your humble narrator. Broadcast Plaza, this is the place. Join today by going to the link in this episode's description or by logging on to discord.gg forward slash broadcast plaza. This is a Sackland Original Podcast. The following segment comes from the November 7th, 2023 edition of the Zachary and Peaches Show. To listen to the full episode, follow and subscribe to Zachary and Peaches wherever you get your podcasts. Animation. Autism. And now, everything else. The Zachary and Peaches Show continues with a Sackland exclusive. It's a story you'll only hear first on the Zachary and Peaches Show. Fair use, copyrights, and archiving broadcast media tell the cautionary tale of Studio 31 Media Archive and its owner, Jim Stanton. This week, we talk with a San Antonio, Texas-based archivist about the recent challenges he's faced in running his popular YouTube channel, with over 5,000 subscribers and many countless views of the recordings of newscast captured for others to view. The important interview and discussion, a Zachary exclusive, right now on Zachary and Peaches. Welcome back to the Zachary and Peaches show, everybody. I'm Emma Settles, alongside my wonderful co-host, Adrian Mata. And uh, for this SCD segment, we're actually doing something a little different. Uh, as the uh, <laughs> as the, the title of suggestion, su- uh, the title of the segment suggests, um, how dare us do anything different on the something completely different segment. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, jokes aside, um, Adrian, why don't you give us a little rundown on, uh, what our STD segment is for tonight's episode? Or this week, rather, actually. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, as, as, uh, as I said in the tease leading up to, uh, this, uh, particular, uh, uh, segment here, earlier before we recorded this episode, uh, I did an interview with, uh, Jim Stanton, who owns Studio 31 Media Archive. It is, of course, a YouTube channel that has posted, uh, recordings of, a uh, newscast, uh, from various different markets and, uh, uh, from various stations, uh, in a way, to, in a way, in a bit of a way that, you know, showcases, you know, uh, the reporting styles of those stations, uh, their and their news departments, and also the uh, the visual aspect, the visual and uh, sound and appearance aspects of those uh, television stations and whatnot. But uh, recently, of course, um, uh, the channel has faced two copyright strikes in the past uh, few weeks, and of course, um, things have not really been looking great uh, for the channel. But uh, but Jim was uh, very kind enough to be able to uh, give me an opportunity to interview him as part of. Uh, as part of this Zachlin exclusive, a first that we are doing here on this podcast here. And so uh, here is the interview with uh, Jim Stanton. And uh, hopefully um, there's going to be some, some important stuff uh, for you to uh, peruse through uh, as a part of that interview. Jim, it's a... Uh, uh, it's great to have you uh, on the uh, Zachary and Peter show. I wish it was under uh, better circumstances, uh, given what you've been going through the past... Uh, a few weeks or so, but uh, first of all, how are you feeling right now? Um, I feel better than I than I did about two weeks ago. I felt it was because this all happened maybe two weeks ago. So at that time, yeah, that was it was a lot to take in for sure. Mm, definitely. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So uh, you are, of course, uh, based in San Antonio, Texas, and you are a uh, whenever when you're not w- at your other job that I won't disclose here, but um, but when you're not working at your other job, that you are a broadcast media archivist. So what exactly does that entail? So uh, yeah, so basically, I uh, record uh, items from television, radio, stuff like that current day and i also try to look at like older stuff off of tapes and stuff but i try to just archive this post it so that way it's preserved for the future so that way maybe 10 years from now you want to see how the news looked or how a promo which is the little things that air in between the newscasts and stuff like that 
uh, how a TV station looked. And I think it's important more now than ever to preserve this because uh, I would say most regular people, I know you and I are kind of a special breed that we pay attention to stuff like this, but I would say most normal people are not really watching uh, local television anymore. They're kind of more into streaming with like Netflix and all that. So I think it's important to kind of preserve this for a, for a shrinking audience. Yeah, definitely. And especially when it comes to like, you know, uh, the, uh, I guess I could say, I, I don't know, more like um, almost a radiofication of sorts of tell of the, of the linear television landscape with, um, with uh, I think with local news becoming, you know, more and more prevalent in uh, TV schedules and, and whatnot. That's one example that I, I could only think of. But uh, but anyway, uh, uh, what started up your passion uh, for uh, for the uh, broadcast uh, and for not only the broadcast industry, but also the news industry as well? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, I've been interested in this since I was younger. Uh, I wanted to and almost did pursue the industry. I mean, I had an internship in high school, but uh, I ended up going a different route for for many reasons. But I've always had a passion for it and I've always wanted to see how it's evolved and it continues to evolve like you've mentioned with stations leaning more on local news and all that but i kind of just want to keep keep archiving it because i I, the industry is continuing to change well always continue to change and i'm just i'm excited to see what's happening and i want to and i want to preserve that i want people to see this is what a station looked like 30 years ago this is what it looks like now and what it'll look like 10 years from now or 20 years from now yeah, and another thing that you've that you've also uh, done is you've also done this uh, podcast called Broadcast Bulletin uh, that uh, kind of really, um, in a way, also you know gives uh, listeners a bit of a deeper dive into the inner workings of the news industry from people who have who work in the industry, who have worked in the industry, and are out of the industry. So, uh, so uh, tell me a little bit more about that and how it, how it kind of really influenced and how it's kind of really affected your passion for the uh, for the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's called Broadcast Bolton. I haven't put it out in a few months just because I've been busy with my main channel, Studio 31. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, podcast I put out because you're right, it gives the listeners insight into the business from those who've been there, uh, those who've left it. And even I've learned a few things. I mean, of course, I don't work in the business, so I don't necessarily know everything that goes on but i mean i mentioned i had an internship and i have multiple connections so i kind of have an idea of what goes on but even then talking with some of the people i've learned stories i didn't even know and the goal of the podcast is just to kind of educate people put them on the inside hopefully and maybe if they want to pursue the business they can uh gain some advice from the from the guests or if they want to leave it uh maybe our guests might say something that might help them. And then these people have opened themselves up too. So if they come on the show and people want to reach out, you know, most of these people have made themselves available if if they want to reach out and give advice to some other people. So I think we've put together a really good platform to kind of educate people on this business because I mean, as I said, and I, I want to, I want to make this clear to everybody uh, that I have a passion for the business and I don't hate the business and it's going through a lot of change. And the goal with all my platforms is to shine a positive spotlight on the industry and kind of, I guess, give greater awareness to it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, with not only with Broadcast Bulletin, but also uh, your uh, your YouTube channel, Studio 31 Media Archive, it has like over 5,000 subscribers who are interested in seeing, you know, how how certain newscasts uh you know may appear on television like in different markets different stations and whatnot uh but recently you were you were uh you uh, your channel has had uh two copyright strikes against you so uh from uh two different parties that uh, again i won't name here but but tell me more about the issues that you've had uh with uh with the channel in the past uh few weeks yeah well i want to start by saying that until this all happened maybe three weeks ago, mid-October of 2023, uh, we've never had, or I should say, I've never had any issues with any party before until all this. And I've been doing this 
for a total of 16 years. The channel itself that you see now has only been around since 11. But, I mean, I had an old channel before, and I've been doing this since 07. And until now, I've never really had an issue with someone trying to trying to claim copyright on something uh, for, like, news broadcasts. Really. Like, okay, I get it if we're posting uh, a full episode of, like, say, Spongebob. I mean... Obviously, the copyright owner is trying to enforce the copyright and make a profit on that. But, and, and I get that. But with what we're doing here, full newscasts, I mean, I post full newscasts and it's difficult because uh, I see the v historical value in what we do, which is, um, you know, to provide an archive of the news, how it looked and 10 years ago or 10 years now, you know, and I think it's great what we're doing, but obviously there's some people out there who don't think what we're doing, I guess is right. Maybe they don't understand what we're doing. I don't get it personally, because as I said, with like an episode of SpongeBob or, or whatever, uh, that's meant to be watched over and over and over. But with these newscasts, they're only meant to be watched once. It's not like they're being released on DVD uh, for you to watch later on. I mean, and, and that that's kind of a double-edged sword because, yeah, they're not trying to make profit on it more than once, but at the same time, uh, and you're not going to be able to see it more than once, but at the same time, it's like, I think there's a historical value in being able to go back and watch these old news broadcasts and that's only the the only thing we've had issue with is like news broadcasts i think it's because of the amount we take which these are like 30 minute shows uh so maybe someone is saying these are too long for fair use and that's the thing we post these under fair use uh <clears throat> excuse me we post these under fair use we don't reach out to them because i know some people are going to say why aren't you just contacting them and getting permission the thing is with these news broadcasts these stations are so understaffed right now uh that they don't have the resources to license the content out uh there's no person at the station you would really go to they don't have a process in place at a lot of these stations to even license this content uh and most of the stations understand what we do, so we just post it. Uh, I've always kind of been a believer of the, you know, ask for forgiveness, then permission, because usually permission is going to be no, but forgiveness, you know. You usually don't know what to expect. I mean, I guess in a way we take a risk with this, because this is copyrighted content, and of course these organizations have every right to enforce that. But then that's another question. Who is able to enforce it because I won't give too much away and say who or what, but I will say that at these stations, not just me, but there's ha there's been other people in the past and now who have had issues too. And it's always like some mid-level manager at the station. It's not like a copyright lawyer. Cause a lot of these companies do have legal departments, but we, every time we've gotten a copyright issue on a newscast, it's never been, it's never been a, a, a copyright lawyer or just a lawyer in general. It's always been someone with a background in journalism. And I don't think they truly understand the fair use aspect. I think that that speaks to what we do. The lawyers have never had an issue. I think they get what we do as fair use. It's always been someone in the, in the, in the station. And I don't, I don't know what their motive is uh, to try to, take these down i think it's unfortunate i mean i think it's really hurtful to our audience because what we're doing is actually i wish the stations would see it this way but i think we're trying to help the stations i think we're trying to give them publicity i mean and i don't think it's fair i mean because they tend to target people like us like archivists but i think i think there's a variety of reasons too I mean, there's other channels that post the same stuff, but like lower quality, and I don't want to name them, but my audience knows who I'm talking about. Uh, there's station, I mean, channels that post them in lower quality, and are they going to go after them? I think they might be targeting me too, because I post these in like 
many people have said, like, it looks like you got them right off the air and I try to have the best equipment. I mean, everything I take is from a, like an online stream, but I try to make sure I have like the best equipment so my stuff looks good and maybe they don't want that. I mean, I could speculate on many reasons, but I just want to say, I don't know what the motive is. I think it's unfortunate though. I think it's, it's hurtful to the audience. Yeah. And, and in the case of one of those parties uh, and I for, forgive me for uh, going a little bit deeper into this, but, uh, but in one in case of one of those parties, they, they even posted like the full newscast from a certain station themselves on their own channel. And, and it seems kind of, it seems kind of hypocritical in a way to do that, but then deny other archivists the chance to, to basically archive the newscast uh, uh, as uh, well, like under fair use and such. No, I agree. I completely agree with that. Yeah, I think that's that's really unfortunate. That's also something else I want to mention too. It's like, why are you going after these archivists? But then, like, I was watching a newscast the other day that an anchor posted of themselves, and I get that. You know, they kind of want to show off their. Uh, their work and so they put up a full newscast themselves i mean nothing wrong with that i completely get that but it's like i think my channel was targeting a different niche and we were at like uh, i had like i still have like five thousand subscribers um and my videos would always get between 500 and a thousand views which i mean for a general audience isn't very big but for our niche because this is indeed a niche for our niche it was pretty it was pretty big compared to my uh the other channels that i don't necessarily want to use the word competition because i wouldn't say i compete against them but other channels that post similar content to mine were would only get like 100 to 200 views for the same amount of content within a day and so i think Maybe they were jealous of that because in the case of one of the stations, my channel had more subs than they do. So maybe it was a jealousy thing. I mean, something else I kind of want to say too is maybe there might be a deeper motive. I mean, I don't want to say too much, but I mean, I think you're aware of there's a troll who has been targeting my channel for a while. And I don't want to name him, but everyone knows who I'm talking about. And and I don't want to give them too much publicity, but I will say that there's a troll out there who's been trying to target my channel because uh, I uh, it wasn't even me, but one of our staff members banned them from the Discord server Broadcast Plaza uh, because they they have multiple issues and they've been coming after me ever since. And maybe it's possible they are faking these. Uh, I think that's a whole other issue. Is is faking copyright which is a big deal i mean i'll say this both of them were filed with gmail addresses which i think is big uh i don't i don't think they should be i think these should only be filed with um corporate email so that way we know that it's truly a representative of the company i think it casts a lot of doubt to say that this is from you're claiming to represent this large corporation, but then you use a Gmail address. I mean, how am I supposed to know it's you or not? It just, I mean, so it may not even be them. I mean, I don't know for sure. I think it's, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of, a lot, a lot to take in for sure though. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we've already talked about, uh, you know, what could be considered fair use and what it, what could not be considered fair use. So I'll go ahead and go on to, uh, I guess, our last question here. You have uh, over 5,000 subscribers. You still have over 5,000 subscribers on the Studio 31 Media Archive channel. But now with all the videos removed and whatnot for the time being, what's what's next for the brand? What's next for the channel? Like, what's the, what does the future look like for, for Studio 31? To be honest, I wish I knew. <laughs> I think um, I'm going to have to stay away from the full shows because... I feel like I'm specifically being targeted. Uh, me and I think there's another couple other channels out there that have aligned with me that have had issues. I won't name them because I don't think they want me to say much about it. So I won't name them. But there are some other channels I've had issues too. But there's also channels that haven't had issues too. And I, I, I that's another thing. I think that's unfortunate. But I think for me... I personally might just have to stay away from the full shows or put them on a different platform that is more respectful to to copyright owners and and I'll or copyright uh 
holders. I'll just say this real quick. Uh, I, uh, because we didn't mention this, but the whole counterclaim. Uh, I tried filing a counterclaim on these because I don't think these copyright strikes were fair or they were correct. And YouTube rejected me. And I, I tr tried filing them at least five, six times. I also reached out to the parties in question. I never got a response back. So uh, my future of using YouTube might be up in the air. I mean, I I don't think YouTube cares for its providers that much i think they care more about these corporations and getting sued by large corporations that they're too afraid to to stand up for their creators so i don't know i i, I want to stay with youtube because it's given me the largest audience uh like internet archive is probably the other one that people use and even then it's it's a safer place for us as archivists to post this kind of content and they understand what we do, I think, but at the same time, uh, that site's not going to give us a large audience. And they've also had their own issues happening recently with, uh, I think they were sued by some book publishers and some uh, recording studios over posting their content. So I'm even doubtful of what the future of Internet Archive might look like. So I may be forced to stay with YouTube, but... I may only be posting news opens. I may only be posting promos, just like items that are short, like under three minutes or under five minutes at most. Uh, I think stations aren't really triggered by that. I think they're mainly triggered by seeing like 30 minute clips and hour clips and thinking they can't monetize that. And that's something I want to mention. We don't, I don't monetize anything on the channel. I don't have, I mean, if there's ads, it's, YouTube making money on it. I don't make a cent off of anything. I mean, I do this all out of my own pocket. I pay for everything you see on the channel. So I, I just, yeah, I mean, I may only just do short clips. Uh, I have my other two channels. I mean, three really, because I have the podcast. I want to do more of that for sure. Um, I want to do, I have a new channel called Forward Broadcast Archive, which is just my temporary channel. Uh, I may do something else with it. Maybe I'll do full newscasts on there in the future. But for now, I'm kind of just playing it safe because I'm not too sure about the whole full newscasting and all that. And then I have my other channel, 31 Rewind, and that's going to be staying and posting the same kind of content as now, which is just commercial breaks, old newscasts, stuff like that, sign-offs. I think uh, people appreciate the older content and... It's interesting that nothing from there has had issues, but I guess they take more issue with the current stuff, which I guess kind of makes sense because they have that available themselves. But most days you just put up like clips, like short little clips from the show. They're not putting up the full shows. I think we're providing a valuable service. So I don't know. Uh, I wish I had a, a complete answer, but I guess it's just going to be time will tell for sure what we'll look like in a few months. I mean, I'll say this, the strikes come off in sometime in January and I just and hopefully we won't we won't have any issues in the future, knock on wood, but I mean we won't know for sure until until then. Yeah, let's hope for the uh let's hope for a bit of a more I guess more normal, more brighter future for the Studio Thirty One brand and the and of course the YouTube channel. I want to bring a little bit of levity to end the uh, to end the conversation here. You mentioned the uh, broadcast bulletin. Our announcer Jared Harris, uh, I understand, uh, did an interview with you uh, uh, at some point. Uh, I think I think like a year or so ago. I, I I I'm not really sure when it's going to come out, but I've been kind of really looking forward to uh, getting you know getting to hear it and just hearing a little bit more about uh, Jared's uh, Jared's story within the. Uh, as part as part of the broadcast industry. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to have, I'd love to put his interview out at some point soon, maybe within a couple of months. I I need to get back on that cuz I recorded some interviews back then. I feel bad I haven't released any of them yet, but yeah, we recorded it about a year or so ago and he's a cool dude. He has a great background and he has a he has a really good voice as you've taken notice of because I mean, you have him doing your announcer. He's a cool dude. I'm really looking forward to having him and I'm glad you have him on to to uh, promote your product. Yeah, definitely. Jim, thank you as always uh, for uh, for uh, being a part of the show and, uh, you know, giving me uh, for uh, for the opportunity to uh, 
have uh, have myself interview you for this uh, occasion here. Obviously, uh, not under the most ideal circumstances, but uh, I hope you come back on the show at some point in the future. And uh, you know, maybe we'll maybe we'll talk a little bit more about you know our usual topics here: animation, autism, and everything else. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adrian. Episodes of Broadcast Bulletin, Jim Stamen's podcast, are available to stream wherever you get your podcast. And uh, special, and again, thank you to uh, Jim for uh, taking the time out of his uh, uh, schedule and for giving me the opportunity to uh, interview him as uh, part of this Zachman exclusive. So, um, copyright and fair use and uh, archiving broadcast media, Emma. Um, a lot of I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot to take in. I think there was a lot to take in. I think from you know from the um, from the interview that I did with Jim and uh, what what were your biggest take what were what were your takeaways from that uh, from that segment there? I think probably my biggest takeaway with this particular interview was the fact that it's it, the nature of new of the news itself. You know, um, as he suggested, you know, you kind of have to be a special breed to sort of you know want. To not only just, you know, engage with local news media, but also, you know, want to preserve it as well. Because, you know, there are, you know, most, as he said during the interview, you know, most quote-unquote normal people will, you know, watch the news and be done with it. Like, you know, it's it's not something that, you know, you go off and has infinite replay value. Um yeah, it's it's basically just like it's 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 just the news. It's just something that you, <laughs> in most most people's circumstances, you don't even really want to watch. You kind of just feel compelled to do, to, you know, to watch it because of the fact that you want to seem like a halfway decent human being <laughs> and have some semblance of knowledge of what's going on in the country and in the world. That being said, I think just in the context of copyright in a fair use you know i see a lot of jim's argument here um as he had mentioned you know in the interview you know the news isn't an episode of spongebob it's especially if it's you know a local program you know it's not something that's you know produced by a high budget studio often Unless, of course, it, it, it is just a straight-out large corporation um, news broadcast. But it, 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 in the context of just, you know, non-streaming local television media, uh, and specifically television news media, considering the fact that it's not directly made by Hollywood, even if it, it could be a subsidiary of a larger company, you know, the fact that it is a local station, the fact that you know, it's it's not something that's going to be watched on repeat unless you you know have a have an interest in uh, in that kind of media. Um, so and yeah, I mean, as he had suggested too, in the age of streaming, you know, people are you know either have have moved on to reading the news on their phones or turning to a more corporate news source or just not even engaging with news media at all or infrequently engaging with news media because of the fact that most people have now uh, entered into the age of streaming and there's already a there, there was already a small enough audience for local news media and now you know that pool is is getting even smaller due to just the nature of you know the modern television industry um and you know the broadcast journal ind- journalism industry in particular um so yeah that being said i think you know i i think the work that he does is very important and i think that you know having an opportunity for people to learn from news media from their area or just from areas throughout the country and throughout the world, you know, it, you know, everything from, you know, what type of news was being broadcasted, who was broadcasting it, 
you know, as well as just how did the news look? What did the bumpers look like? You know, what did the interview rooms look like? You know, how, who was the ones who were going out in the field mostly? You know, little details like that. It, you know, the kind of details that you, you know, you, you really don't completely think about paying attention to while you're watching the news, but you would if you were watching, say, your favorite TV serial, you know, um, just appreciating, I think just, if anything, the work that he's doing, I think is primarily, you know, helping to appreciate the craft that is broadcast journalism, especially broadcast journalism that is not, or is only partially propped up by a larger parent company. Um, so, yeah, that being said, I, I think it's a little strange that he's now sort of getting flagged for for copyright, especially as, you know, the nature of fair use um, and the fact that he's been doing this for so long and he's only been recently encountering some troubles with his archival work. Um, that being said, though, if... You know, if you want to take it from the, you know, if 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 you're if you're taking it from the side of the people who are complaining about this, um, you know, if it, again, if if you have like a local subsidiary of a larger news corporation, you know, CNN, a not a CNN, but you know. ABC, NBC, CBS, God forbid Fox, um, <laughs> but, you know, just a, a larger news studio, you know, maybe I could kind of see it considering the fact that, you know, it is still falling under the, you know, e even though it's it's a quote-unquote single-use sort of of thing, it's still you know, a, a property of, you know, whatever news segment or, you know, news-based talk show, you know, sit-down morning news station, whatever. I don't have the language for this. I'm not a journalist. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, long story short here, I could kind of see it people complaining if it was, you know, news that was based on even a local subsidiary of a larger corporation. Um, but at the same token, though, that, that even that's kind of ridiculous, considering the fact that, again, just the nature of news itself, as well as the fact that, you know, old ABC, NBC, etc. broadcasts um, from, you know, the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, even up to, like, say, the relatively, uh, the most, you know, the past 30, 40 years, um, probably even the past 20 years, possibly, uh, at least snippets of it can be used as, you know, fair use, as opposed to, you know, something that, that's still being protected by copyright law, just due to the nature of, you know, time between you know, 2023 in the year that whatever news was presented was broadcasted. So, you know, that being said, uh, it's, it, this is kind of a weird tightrope to walk around. I mean, even, you know, I've had, I have some experience with copyright law because I'm currently in the process of, you know, getting some of my, my own work, you know, my own original IPs protected under copyright law. Um, at least doing research for it in order to do so. But at the same token, though, you know, from everybody who I've I've spoken to about copyright, it's it's a very strange in some ways process because you know you, you can the the categories are either so open ended or they're so you know narrow and specific that it's a bit odd and you know the definitions for certain things can get a little blurry especially as the years progress um in regards to 
you know, broadcast media and, and just older media in general. Um, but yeah, that being said, copyright and free use, just you know, copyright, fair use, all that kind of stuff is, is kind of a strange world in general. Um, especially if you're trying to navigate it as someone who's approaching it as more, from more of a, you know, a journalistic standpoint. But at the very least, you know, the too long didn't read for this, I think, is, you know, I, I think, you know, the work that he's doing is very important. And overall, you know, I, I just find it a bit weird that he is getting flagged for stuff that, you know, in the past, uh, could have been seen as fair use or, or you know, whatever reason. Um, and yeah, again, it's it's not like you're, as he his famous example, it's not like you're pirating an episode of SpongeBob. You're, it's 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 the news. So, yeah. Anyway, um, whatever the situation is, again, this this argument is is very fascinating. Has a level of nuance, and you know, me being me, who's you know more. <laughs> who's who's not particularly a fan of this type of of media um yeah you know, me i guess you know to put it in his terms me being a quote unquote normal person about news media um you know there's there's only so much i can really say about it but at the same token though at the very least i i do recognize that the work that jim is doing is incredibly important and i just i find it strange that he's only now getting uh, getting criticized, flagged, whatever the case is for the work that he's been doing. And I did bring this up with Jim because because uh, one of the parties that uh, uh, that we kind of addressed there um, uploaded the uh, uploaded a full newscast onto their channel, and then pretty much uh, pretty much uh, basically disallowed other archivists uh, from even uploading it to their own respective channels. So it's just, it's kind of mind boggling to say the least. Yeah, agreed. It's just it's 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 been pretty strange in that regard. Um but again, you know, I I wish him all the best and I genuinely hope that he's able to uh to figure uh most of the situation out and that he's able to, you know, pivot as best as he can while continuing to do the incredibly important work that he's doing as an archivist. <laughs> The preceding segment came from the November 7th, 2023 edition of The Zachary and Peaches Show. Also during that episode, Emma Settles and I discussed about Haley's On It, one of Disney's latest animated television series. We also talked quite a bit about overcoming one's own fears during that episode. To listen to that full episode now, subscribe to The Zachary and Peaches Show wherever you get your podcasts. For right now, I'm Adrian Monta. We hope you'll tune in to another episode of The Zachary and Peaches Show. Goodbye for now. This is Jared Harris speaking for the Zachary and Peaches show produced, edited and co-hosted by Adrian Mata and co-hosted with Emma Settles. The Zachary and Peaches show is a Sackland original podcast.